Well, uh, I'm back again with another video, blog, vlog, whatever you want to call it. Um, this time, I, let me see, last time, um, last time I gave my testimony, um, or no, no, I, I talked about, um, about love uh, from a different aspect, but, um, you know, my testimony, it wasn't, it wasn't hard to give, you know, there, you know, there's some things that, you know, are, are difficult from your past. Um, but I would say, uh, because the Lord had just really done a work and just really delivered me from a lot of, um, things in my childhood and so on and so forth, it wasn't as hard to talk about. Uh, so I am going to start off this video saying that what I'm going to get into, um, is difficult to talk about. Um, for me, especially um, because vulnerability um, is just not something that I do well. Um, I'm pretty transparent as, as as far as, you know, what goes on um, or what has gone on in my life. But um, I think transparency and vulnerability, although they go hand in hand, are kind of a little a little different. Um, so just throwing that <clears throat> throwing that out there. Um the title of this is going to be, you know, really simple. Um, it's called Guard Your Heart. Uh, matters of the heart are so serious. Um, so that's why I'm just going to keep it plain. Guard your heart. Um, and plenty of people have different ideas of what it means to guard your heart, of what that looks like. And I think that's fine. Like, I don't think there's this one set way um, to guard your heart. And that's it. Like, you must follow these steps to guard your heart. Um However, it is important to guard your heart. And um, up until I would say middle of this year, I didn't realize just how important it was um, to guard your heart. And uh, that's why I'm making this video. Actually, I believe the Lord has placed it on my heart to share. And I pray that it blesses some young ladies, even some young men, um, you know, by watching this um, and that my my testimony, my sufferings so to speak um will be an example um so that others don't have to follow in my footsteps now growing up um if you watch my testimony it was just me and my mom um you know I had uncles and, and so on and so forth but uh nobody was saved um I never had um a picture of what a biblical man looked like or what biblical <clears throat> courtship, marriage, none of that, like what that looked like. Um, I had no idea. So when I got saved, I knew that I had to be with a godly man. Um, but that's it. That's all I knew. Um, and I assumed that because, you know, men were Christian that, um, that that was good, you know, that they were going to treat me right, that they were going to, you know, act right. Um, that they were going to be godly and biblical. And, um, I soon found out that, that wasn't the case. Um, so uh, those that are, you know, close to me or, you know, or, or know me um, personally, uh, they've heard, heard a little bit about this or they'll know who I'm speaking of, um, I guess, which makes this more uncomfortable, but um, that's fine. So um, I got saved about six years ago um, and I would say shortly after I got saved, uh, maybe we'll go with five, six months after I got saved. Um, I met this guy and, um, well, I had met him before, but we, we started, we started talking and stuff around this time. And, um, like I said, no idea what it meant to guard my heart. And because like he was godly, um, and, and so on and so forth. Like I, I could see that, you know, um, not understanding that he wasn't mature enough. I wasn't mature enough, um, to even enter to, cause you know, that I was like, I had just turned 15, you know? So like, obviously I wasn't mature enough to, um, be, you know, in this relationship. Uh, however, you know, we talked and so on and so forth and puppy love, yada, yada, yada. And here we are, we're together. And, and there were signs, there were signs and, and that's, and that's, I guess that's what I want to convey to you, you guys, especially my young ladies, if there's signs of a man not being this biblical man, not, um, exemplifying the characteristics of characteristics, characteristics of Christ, you know, um, back away, you know, be weary, like 
step aside and examine it not not from your feelings but like with a clear head within you know with um no bias like step back and evaluate the situation because to continue in a situation that you know is not healthy is dangerous um and it leaves your heart in your heart in shambles as i'm going to get into um so i met this guy you know we started dating dating or whatever um it was long distance um praise the lord because that you know that kept me from a whole lot of stuff that lord knows i don't even want to get into um but even with it being long distance was so impure so not holy at all you know although we would like to say it was because yeah we talked about god here and there and you know we each separately read our bibles and so on and so forth but it wasn't a godly relationship at all and i had no business being in a relationship i was newly saved um, I had no business being there, um, but because, and, and you know, it's not any excuse, but because I didn't have these examples, because I, I didn't know, you know, this is where I was. So, um, you know, as time grew, talking every single day, you know, being on the phone, building those soul ties and those emotional attachments, um, I, I genuinely began to love him, or at least at that time, what I thought was love. Um, I, you know, really uh, began to care for him. He's, you know, he would tell me that he loved me and how he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me and how we were going to get married and yada, 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 yada. But in those same breaths, it would be like, um, I'm going to do this one day. You know, it was always that one day mentality to have me, um, you know, holding on, sticking around um, kind of thing. And I didn't, I didn't see the signs of, all, all of the, the constant arguments, all of the selfishness on both ends, just complete immaturity. And that's because we needed to grow more in Christ. But now that that attachment had been made, it was like, I don't want to let it go. You know, I don't I don't want to move on. I was completely 159,000 percent out of my role um, uh, as, as a woman in Christ or a girl in Christ at that time. I was, I was completely out of my role. You know, it would be me that, you know, if something happened, like I would go after him or, um, you know, or I would be the one, you know, calling him or, or, or texting him or when he would leave me, like, you know, I would go back, you know, like it, I was pretty much pursuing him, you know? Um, and I couldn't see it at the time. I couldn't see it that way. Um, and he let me, you know? And that that's, I guess that's another big issue is that ladies, like if, if a guy is allowing you to pursue him and, and he's, you know, not doing any of the work, um, or the work period, like, you know, you're the one that's leading this relationship run, <laughs> run in the opposite direction. And again, I didn't. So, you know, I was the one, um, pursuing him. Like I was the one making these plans and he kind of just was going along with it and letting me, um, now this like I said, I, you know, this was six years ago and this relationship has been on and off for these past six years. Now there were people in between, um, you know, whatever, cause it's like, Oh, we're broken up or we're on a break or whatever. But, um, the attachment in my heart has lasted, um, this entire time. So, um, so, you know, you know, time passed, weeks passed, months passed, years passed. And, um, it was, you know, still, it was still so much immaturity and, um, I started, but I started to grow more in Christ. So I started to see like, okay, this isn't right. This isn't right. This isn't right. You know? So I started to back away. I started to quote unquote, try to guard my heart. But the thing was I hadn't guarded my heart from the beginning. He hadn't guarded his heart, you know, to my knowledge. And he wasn't guarding my heart. You know, that that's a serious issue is that, this man who claimed to love me, um, who was, you know, a godly man, wasn't guarding my heart. Like he, um, like I told you, um, at years went by. So like when, when Skype was available and stuff like that, like he, he wasn't, he wasn't guarding my heart. You know, our conversations were not, um, were not pure. You know what I'm saying? Um, some of the, the pictures that I received from him were not pure. Um, you know, him just, simply being on Skype with his shirt off, you know, things like that, that, okay, aren't huge, played a big part in my heart, um, you know, and kept me that much more attached to him. And so, um, 
like I said, like, t you know, time went on and this, it just developed stronger and stronger feelings to where, when I finally got to the point about maybe a year or so ago, I got to the point where I was like, man, I'm done. Like I'm, I'm fed up, you know, um, over a year ago, actually, maybe, maybe two years now where I'm just like, you know, I'm fed up. Like I'm done. This, this is not the way it should be. I know this is not the way it should be. You know, I've matured in the Lord by this time. So I just know that this, how this isn't how things are supposed to go. But like I was saying that that attachment had become so strong and he, he was my safe place. It was like, okay, yeah, we would break up. I would go, I would date somebody else or whatever. But I always knew I had him to run back to. Like he was, he was that safe place for me. Like he was that comfort zone and just, I, I was, I was comfortable there. Like I, you know, I knew, um, I could always go and get that emotional high that I needed or, you know, I could have him tell me, baby, I love you. And so on and so forth. Like I could go and get that from him. Um, and that's what I did. You know, uh, it was there and I went and I would go and I would get that from him. Um, not realizing just how dangerous that was and how much that, you know, would hinder any other relationship that I got into or wanted to get into that would hinder, um, uh, my marriage, like all of these things. I, I just wasn't even thinking about how I'm going to be attached to this man and then claim to give my whole heart to my husband, like, or even give my whole heart to Christ, like to, to have this man as like, almost an idol in my life. Um, uh, because you know, that's, that's how much I wanted, um, that's how much I wanted him. That's how much I wanted that. And although I would, you know, say, oh, I'm done. I don't want this or try to talk myself out of it, so on and so forth. Reality was that I was, I was in so deep that, you know, that my head was underwater. Like I, I was drowning in this thing and, um, and couldn't get out. And, um, so again, you know, that persisted. And then, you know, we would make plans, um, to get married and so on and so forth. And, you know, my hopes would get up and, and then something would happen, you know, either I would get fed up with how things were going and I would end it or, you know, um, he would come with the, the most cliche Christian thing is like, you know, I think we should focus more on God and, you know, the Lord's timing this and this and that, which a hundred percent, yes, we do need to, um, wait on the Lord's timing. But you, I mean, you know, like that's the Christian version of, um, it's not you, it's me kind of thing. Um, and I would always get that, you know, from him and, and it hurt, you know, but again, I was still, I was still so attached. And by this time I've learned, you know, what, um, what, what, what God says about love and, and, you know, it being patient and kind and, and long suffering and enduring all things. Um, and that that's what I felt towards him, you know, that, that I loved him so much. And because I had developed all of this, all of these feelings and all of this love for him, it was, it was like, I had on my rose colored glasses and no matter how bad things got or, you know, how much I knew that this isn't where I needed to be. I stayed because, you know, again, it was comfortable for me. I loved him. I didn't want to, I didn't want to let go. Like I didn't, I didn't know how to let go. Um, and then that, that mentality will creep up on you is like, well, if I let this go, what if something else never comes? Like he loves me, you know, I love him, but the relationship didn't exemplify that. Um, you know, and again, not to, not even to claim, oh, Jasmine is perfect. And, you know, I did everything right. And I wasn't selfish and arguments were my fault. Not even the case, but I loved him, you know, um, and, and I, and I showed that, but I wasn't getting it in return. And I am to blame because I wasn't guarding my heart. You know, he's not to blame for my heart being crushed completely because I needed to be guarding my heart and I wasn't. And so, um, so that, that mentality would sneak up on me at like, what if, you know, what if nothing else comes or, you know, the devastation of seeing him with someone else? Um, and to this day, s still have to fight that feeling, still have to fight, um, you know, what it's going to be like um, to see him, you know, with another woman or to to know that he's married, you know, and to I guess to know that I've lost him forever, so to speak. Um but as I said, okay, this, you know, this persisted and, um, this didn't officially, like our communication didn't officially like stop, stop until maybe three months ago, um, three months ago from today. Um, 
and that I guess that's what makes it even uh, harder to talk about is that like although we weren't together for all of these years we weren't together for all of these years um that attachment has just been dragging along with me this whole time and you know I there's nights where I you know I cry out to the Lord and I'm just like Lord like like I can't take this anymore like you know you you've gotta you, you've gotta take these feelings away like you you know I'm asking him to break these whole these soul ties um because it's serious you know um to the point where I would have like feelings like how do I live without him you know and that's crazy because only person I need to live is Christ but again he had become my idol and we I had become so attached and I'm just like how do I live without this man like you know I just love him so much and um and, and it became scary to me because the thing is I would you know I would pray and I'd be like all right lord like you know like speak to me like you know sh tell me if I need to leave this if this is not who you had for me and I can't even count the 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 times that the lord has told me no and has shown me why and has given me um you know reasons why and just made it so perfectly clear but because I wanted this so bad um and because I was so attached I kept holding on, you know, like I kept communication, I, you know, and that whole just friends thing or we're just cool or, you know, it wasn't that, you know, because my heart was still somewhere else. It was still wanting to be um, with this man. And so, um, I, you know, to this day, like I still have to, I still have to, you know, I still have to pray for the Lord to, to to completely heal my heart and to completely deliver me. Um, I know now sitting here um, in front of you, and I, I think the hardest part about this is knowing that he might watch this. Um, but I know now sitting here uh, in front of you that that's not, that's not where the Lord has me. Um, that's, that's not where I'm supposed to be um, according to what he, you know, according to what he's, revealed to me um right here right now in this time I believe it's you know period that we're just not supposed to be together but right I can say for certain right here right now in this time in this season that's not who the Lord has for me um but again because it was because I, of the attachment that is so strong you know it, it's hard and some days are easier than others um most days are pretty hard, you know, um, I'm cool, I'm good until I hear his name or until I'm reminded of him or, you know, until I see something maybe on a social network or something. Um, but it's hard, you know, it's, it's, it's a daily battle and, um, and to pray against it. And all of this started because I didn't guard my heart because I didn't, um, have that, 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 that protection up um with the word of god like knowing um just knowing my worth you know knowing what the what the lord um had for me what he wanted for me the best for me like i didn't know that and i didn't understand that and so i gave a man keys to my heart and a place to my heart that only christ and my husband should reside um i gave him you know marital access without being married you know um and i want to go even further to say that me and this this guy we've never kissed you know we've never done any of that physical stuff but the emotion is i would say the emotional attachment is um equal to or greater than sex you know i i can't really say if it's you know if it's if it's greater than because i've never had sex um but i can say that it, it is super strong like never having kissed never having um done any any of the physical stuff that um, it's still such an attachment. And if I can encourage you guys in any way, especially my ladies is, um, is know your, know your worth, know who you are, and then know what the Lord wants for you. You know, know that he wants a man that is going, um, to guard your heart and to go about pursuit biblically and to treat you as, as his sister until he's your husband, you know, um, to just really love you like Christ and not impose himself on you, not, um, cause you to stumble, not go through, um, not go through all of these things, you know, um, and, and my, you know, my fellas, I guess my encouragement to you would be, um, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy stringing along, um, you know, a girl's heart and, 
you know, whispering sweet nothings in her ear, you know, and telling her, you know, all of these things all the time that are going to build up these emotions in her and have her attached to you when, um, one, you probably don't, you don't, probably don't plan on marrying her. And if you do plan on marrying her, you're not married to her yet. You know, make sure that her heart is, is still lost in the Lord and still focused on the Lord. Um, and not in you, you know, that you don't become her idol and vice versa. Um, you know, fellas, don't let a girl whisper sweet nothings in your ear and have you so attached to her and so in love with her that you're, you know, being her husband and y'all ain't married, you know? Um, so that, I guess, um, without getting into like crazy details and names that, you know, that, that's my story is of something that I still have to pray against. I still, you know, struggle with, and, um, I still need more healing from the Lord on, um, because I allowed this, you know, this man into my life and, um, and I, you know, I allowed him to not guard my heart and I refused to guard mine. And this is in no way, you know, knocking on his character or him being a man of God, because he is, he's a great man of God. You know, um, one of the most humble men I know, you know, uh, one of the most kind hearted men I know he's, he is, he's, he's an amazing guy, but, um, with the lack of, you know, maturity. And again, on my end, not demanding that he guard my heart and not guarding my own, you know, um, I can't completely blame him. So, um, I, I said all this to say that, um, I hope that my experience and the hurt that I've been through and the hurt that I still go through serves as an example, um, to anybody watching this, that the importance of guarding your heart and, just making sure that you go about things biblically, just making sure that you set your standards high and you keep boundaries and you don't compromise um, in relationships. Um, and when the Lord says leave, when the Lord says let it go, when the Lord says move, move, like obey the voice of the, the voice of the Lord and, you know, be in tune to the voice of the Lord, be seeking the Lord, inquiring of the Lord um, what what to do next or or, you know, before each step of, of any relationship, just make sure you're at the feet of the Lord. So, you know, that if he's like, this is not it yet, you know, whatever the case may be is like, you're interested in somebody and the Lord says, no, then please don't say, well, you know, I, I feel like it, or I like him, or I love him would go run, leave. Like, because I'm telling you disobedience, um, costs disobedience to the Lord costs you. And it's cost me greatly. Um, and I don't want to see that for any of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so yeah, this is my little testimony sharing, um, on guarding your heart. And I pray that again, that this, this blesses somebody. Um, so yeah, feel free to hit me up with any, um, questions or concerns or comments, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, y'all have a blessed day.